Hey, Internets. So recently, some of you may have heard about some drama centering around the streamer Destiny. Specifically, his open relationship marriage appears to be in shambles and possibly getting a divorce. Yes, you heard that right. Open relationship marriage. Yeah. You know, that kind of polyamorous claptrap where the couple doesn't actually commit to each other in any meaningful, responsible way. So they are married, but still sleeping with other people. Yeah, um, yeah. And then the relationship ultimately fails because, well, that's kind of what happens when you try to be in this kind of relationship without any kind of meaningful commitment. Because apparently, no responsibility is the new hip and trendy progressive thing to be. Now, I do need to add a disclaimer here, though. The purpose of this video is not to poop on Destiny too hard, or even really to make fun of him. I'm just using this drama as a perfect example of the subject I'm going to be talking about. Anyways, yeah, it's it's dumb. It's really, really dumb. But specifically, why is it dumb? A lot of times you'll hear the word being thrown around in regards to this kind of thing as degeneracy. And a lot of people might immediately ask, well, what exactly is that? What does it mean to be degenerate? Why is it certain values cause society to decay while other values build society? And this is an important question to ask because an extremely common argument you might find from left this is that when anyone with conservative or right-leaning views uses the word degeneracy, that this word doesn't actually mean anything, that it's just a subjective snarl word we're using to describe any type of behavior that we don't like. And admittedly, this criticism is not entirely without merit to it. There are indeed a lot of rhinoids out there who say the word degeneracy or to direct it insult degenerate as little more than an alternative to calling something filthy. And then it kind of spirals out from there. Are video games degenerate? Is watching TV degenerate? Are cheerleaders degenerate? Is TikTok degenerate? Are VTubers degenerate? Is anime degenerate? Is staring at the wall while contemplating your existential dread degenerate? Or just going out and simply drinking with your friends degenerate? And eventually this might start to seem to people like conservatives are just the fun police. So it's no wonder that so many young people tend to swing left these days when it seems like the rightoids just want you to stop enjoying things. But the problem is, this isn't actually true. So in this video I'm going to remedy this problem by going a bit more in depth into the subject of time preferences, which on top of being an interesting subject on its own in regards to Austrian economics, also provides a simple and straightforward objective framework to help people understand what is and isn't degenerate, and how this concept can provide a simple explanation for why the type of relationship Destiny was in is neither good for them nor is it good for society. Now, time preferences are, as the name somewhat suggests, in relationship to a person's preference for time, specifically a preference for short-term gratification also called a high time preference in that the person has a high preference for the now over later versus delayed gratification also called low time preference and that the person has a low preference for now and is thus fine with waiting. And in terms of economics, time preferences refer to the fact that time itself is valuable. If you were given a choice between being handed $1,000 now or $1,000 in 10 years from now, just about every sane person is going to choose to have that $1,000 right now. The reasons why are fairly obvious. The future is uncertain. Inflation could cause that $1,000 to be worth significantly less in 10 years, or of course you might just need that $1,000 before your 10 years is up, or heck, for all you know, you're gonna die sometime in the next decade, and would thus never even get to enjoy that 1k anyways. So of course everyone would take it now rather than waiting. But if we change things up a bit and ask the question slightly differently, we'll get a very different response. Would you rather have $1,000 now or $50,000 deposited into account in your name that you can access in 10 years from now? And for the sake of keeping things fair, let's just assume that you are asked this question at the age of 20. Suddenly things are flipped around. Based on inflationary trends, $50,000 in US money next decade is almost guaranteed to be worth more than $1,000 right now. And getting a $50,000 in your early 30s is a huge benefit, since your 30s are usually the decade of a person's life where they can start considering buying a house, and $50,000 would make for the perfect down payment on that. So 50K at the age of 30 is almost certainly going to be worth more to you than 1K at the age of 20. So in this question, the opposite happens. Most sane people are going to choose to wait a decade for the 50K. However, in this case, there's also going to be a small portion of people who still take the 1K at the age of 20, or in other words, take $1,000 now over $50,000 later. And then a huge portion of the people who make this decision will then immediately proceed to stupidly blow their entire 1K on cigarettes, weed, and alcohol, and drugs, etc, etc. And they'll do this for a variety of reasons, but the main reason is that they are, well, just stupid. No real way to sugarcoat it. And that's just the interesting thing about time preferences, is that the people who are capable of taking delayed gratification when it's the right move are generally associated with people having higher intelligence. 
This is the main reason why human beings are the only species on Earth to have really figured out farming. The idea of bury the seed, then wait for the seed to grow, and then turn the crops requires a bit more than just a chimpanzee brain to figure out. Some other animals have figured out hoarding for the winter, but this isn't nearly as complex as what humans have done. But then that brings us back to the question, what the hell does this have to do with cultural degeneracy and destiny getting cucked? Well, quite a lot actually. Time preferences extends beyond just a basic Austrian economic concept, and can also be used to judge the sustainability of cultural values. And what we find is that generally cultural values and virtue ethics that build civilization and improve its economic standing tend to be values with low time preference, while the negative values that cause a society to decay and falter in their values tend to be high time preference. This isn't always the case 100% of the time, but the correlation is strong enough that it should be taken as a rule of thumb. And it does provide a fairly accurate take on whether or not something is degenerate, because if deciding on something is degenerate or not, you can just ask yourself the very simple question, does this create sustainability over long periods of time, or does it cause society to falter? Is it not sustainable? Is it guaranteed to cause failure in 10, 20, 30 years down the line. And you can find examples of how this works out by just studying history. This is why you find very similar values in the most long-lasting societies and most ancient spiritual and religious beliefs. For instance, if you compare Christianity and Buddhism, who had very different origins, you will still notice that some of their most important commandments are the same. For instance, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery or engage in sexual mischief and misbehavior. Christianity and Buddhism share all of these values. And that they share these things, and that both of these religions exist at the heart of civilizations whose cultures have stood the test of time throughout centuries, is actually not a coincidence. All of these values are important to long-term sustainability. Now, murdering, stealing, and lying, the reasons for why those create a non-sustainable society if you were to disobey them, those three are pretty obvious. But what about the fourth one, adultery and sexual misbehavior? That one stands out a little bit odd, wouldn't you think? I mean, it's not hurting anybody, it's a voluntary interaction between two consenting adults. So unlike the first three, there's no direct, obvious victim. And yet, having virtues and values against being a total sex monkey is something that you very consistently find among the most successful cultures and successful religions. Well, when you think about it, the answer is actually pretty obvious, because it's necessary for passing the torch on to the next generation. To understand what specifically this means, let's compare the numbers of Destiny's cuckold adventures to a more traditional, family-oriented relationship. Well, for starters, these open marriages have a 92% failure rate according to certain studies. That's really bad. That's really, really bad. If you compare that to the divorce rate of normal relationships, even in countries like United States that have terrible divorce rates, that 92% is really high. Remember, the way percentages works, 90% is significantly higher than 50%. And they found that one of the reasons this happens is because 80% of the time in these types of relationships, someone gets jealous. Wow, it's almost like when you have a relationship between A and B, and B brings in C, and A doesn't like that C is now part of the relationship, that this maybe, just maybe, might create some kind of conflict in the relationship. Although I'm not entirely sure though, perhaps more research is needed to, to figure out why 1 plus 1 equals 2 here. And surprise, surprise, when we look into Destiny's Cuck Adventures, we find that this is exactly what happened. In a Discord message from him, it reads, I'll have a small convo when I'm back about things, not gonna nuke Melina or anything. The last two months and two weeks have been a massive mind F for me, watching her become obsessed with a toxic, abusive guy. And he apparently gave her an ultimatum to divorce me, and then threatened to kill himself when she didn't do it among 20 other abusive things. And so yeah, this is her bringing a guy into the relationship that Destiny doesn't respect. This is bringing a third wheel, Person C, into the open relationship and it not working out. And to be honest, Destiny's probably right. She probably shouldn't have brought this Person C into the relationship. Generally, anybody who threatens to kill themselves, that's just the reddest flag of all red flags that this person is a manipulative psychopath. And Melina's being an idiot for bringing him in. And I'm actually just going to predict that she's probably going to regret this behavior a year down the line from now. I mean, in all seriousness, this is what you'd kind of call a no-shit Sherlocker. You shouldn't even have to do empirical research to figure this one out. But unfortunately, in Clown World 2023, a lot of people just don't get it. People tell themselves that they're special, that it won't affect them, that they're going to be that 8% where it works out for them because of their unique work circumstance. And guess what? This is exactly the cope that Destiny gave on his stream. Pure, unfiltered copium. And then going back to passing on the torch to the next generation. The problem with these relationship failures is that divorce or just general parental breakups 
have been proven to have a causal effect on children's lack of well-being, resulting in worse education, lowered access to resources, increased likelihood to commit crimes later in their life, reduced income later in their life, basically a nice big basket of bad stuff you don't want. The reality is that these types of no commitment, no responsibility relationships tend to fail, and when they fail, they screw the kids up. And again, this is kind of a no shit Sherlocker. If a society decided to go, oh hey, let's all party it up and just completely forget about passing anything on to the next generation and completely forget about having a sustainable family for them, well, that society would be on their last generation. Because they're certainly not passing on their values to the next generation, they've already stated that they don't care about them. And look, I'm not saying that Destiny himself doesn't care about his kids. I'm sure he cares about them a lot. I'm just pointing out the simple fact that the type of relationship he chose is the type of relationship that tends to screw them over. And this is why we can definitively say that these kinds of relationships are degenerate, because their time preference is all about the instant gratification. An open poly relationship makes the people in them feel good. It carries significantly reduced commitment, significantly reduced responsibility. It allows the people in them to enjoy the benefits of a relationship without giving as much up. In the short-term high time preference, this can very easily seem like a fantastic idea. One might think to themselves, oh hey, I don't have the time to commit to a relationship, but I want to be in a relationship anyway, so I know I'll enter this open relationship and have somebody else make the time for my partner. And then of course, later down the line, that somebody else happens to be someone that causes the relationship to fall apart. But of course, that's what happens in the long term. And people getting into poly crap aren't thinking long term. Or at the very least, they're not doing a very good job of it. And this standard can just as easily be applied to some of the other things I mentioned at the start of this video. For example, are video games degenerate? Well, video games are really just another form of art and leisure. So on their face alone, they're very unlikely to be collapsing civilization anytime soon. But of course, if someone decided that all they're going to do is play video games all day while trying to live off their parents and or through the state through welfare without ever contributing anything to society, well, yeah, that could get pretty degenerate. And from that, we have organically arrived at the realization that avoiding laziness is a good virtue for society to have. This is why understanding time preferences is such a useful tool for evaluating what builds civilization and what destroys it. Because it's not always so cut and dry as asking the easy to understand question, is X degenerate? And expecting an easy answer of yes, X is degenerate, or no, it's not. So often it's not the thing itself that is degenerative to society, but the abuse of it. For example, romantic relationships themselves are obviously not degenerate. In fact, the opposite is true. A society with no romance and no leisure time would almost certainly fail within one generation because again, no romance means no kids and no leisure time or anything fun to do at all would just make everybody in the society go completely insane. So it's definitely going to fail within one generation if you go the opposite way. And thus, it is mainly when people are stupid with the amount of time they allocate to these things, that's when the problems start to occur. And that's when we start to realize what the main problem problem is with these high time preference values is that ultimately someone ends up paying the cost of the time that they wasted. Societies with traditionally lower time preference understood this. They understood that the success of civilization banks on the sum of the members in that society being positive. Thus, people who choose to partake in behavior that creates a negative for the next generation are thus partaking in degenerate behavior in that they are doing something that degenerates the structure of their society. And it is thus entirely reasonable for members of a civilization to shun or otherwise physically remove said type of behavior from society if they wish to maintain the culture that built their civilization in the first place. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this subject. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, leave a tip in my Ko-Fi if you really liked it, or just leave a comment for the algorithm. Till next time.